Welcome, Welcome to, to the Resilience in Leadership Podcast. I am Coach Anda Goseco. And I am Ian Santos. In each episode, we share our story and interview world-class Filipino leaders who are among the best in the world and who deserve a spotlight for all their courage and perseverance to greatness. Our goal is to recognize outstanding Filipino leaders who exemplify leadership traits worth emulating. Start a movement to enhance and elevate leadership capabilities in the country. Create a community that helps each other become better leaders. And inspire other leaders to elevate their game through integrity, malasakit, courage, inspiration, and resilience. As we strive to become that great one, we have to fuel our spirit with these inspiring, resilient, and courageous Filipino leaders that we have today. So if you are someone who leads a great workplace and engages employees, loves to achieve great results, or simply someone who aims to succeed as a leader, this this podcast podcast is for for you. you. Now Now let's let's get get to to the the show. show. So when I started coaching back in 2010, it was quite a journey for me because before that, I was a marketing strategist, I was doing sales, I was in HR as well and trying to discover who I really was as a person and how I could contribute to this world. And I felt that with all those three jobs, it wasn't it yet. When I discovered coaching, I finally realized that this was it for me, the description of coaching, of what it was of how it was going to help a lot of people. I really liked it and I felt that that was truly me. And about three years ago, I decided to intentionally just look at who I was as a person, who I was as a coach. It started with asking people what they thought of me. The most difficult thing about uh, having a service or me as a product is look at who I was. And I felt that the best people who knew me were my clients. I saw that there were patterns in what they were saying. I saw that They were saying that I was able to help them in difficult situations, complex situations. I was able to uncover things about themselves, uh, get to find out the triggers or how they would operate and come up with really clear solutions that were measurable. I saw that the common thing was being able to help teams and leaders uncover their blind spots. And so that's what brought me to what I stand for today. I'm able to to transform leaders positively and, and make, help them make better decisions with the organizations that they lead. So if you look at it right now, it's a cube with the initials C and A. So you have to look at it very carefully. C and A stands for Coach Anda, that's me. And why is it a cube? Because cube is like a, a Rubik's cube. It is a puzzle that I, I like to play with also and could never solve. But I'd like to relate it to like a, a people puzzle. So people can get really complicated, complex, or sometimes we also don't know ourselves. We don't know how the environment is affecting us or triggers. As a like a, a person who can solve people puzzles, I help you see clearly what the patterns are, how to form that puzzle and make all the pieces fit to make sense out of what's happening. And when you're able to see that clearly, then you'll, you'll be able to know how to navigate difficult situations. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our live podcast of Resilience in Leadership. Let me just give you a background on how this started. Ian and I are very passionate about helping leaders in organizations or even business leaders or business owners um, really manage change and complexity because the world we live in today has been has, is really more complex than ever before. So what we wanted to do was for, to provide support by creating this podcast where we talk about um, challenges in in leadership and resilience. And we also interview different speakers. And we're very excited to have today uh, Dean with us to share us his thoughts on leadership. But before anything else, I'd like to thank the organizers of this podcast. Um, We've worked with uh, people behind the scenes, but especially John Mark, who has really supported us by um, 
uh, supporting us by, by sharing this platform, StreamYard, with us. We'd like to thank Joe Mark especially for helping us today. Yeah, th th thanks very much, Joe Mark, for making this possible on StreamYard. Uh, by the way, this is the first time we're going to do this thing live. So no, no cuts here. So I hope you bear with us. Hopefully no major uh, issues. But uh, really, it's all about when we talk about leadership and resilience, I think it resonates with a lot of people. No? And, uh, no? mm -hmm. and uh, I just wanted to very briefly uh, talk about a dear friend of ours, no? Uh, the good thing is she made it back home. Uh, you know, all know Virginia Bautista, most of you, I'm sure. Uh, she just had two ma major brain operations. She's back home, but she's still in the recovery period. So we'd like to thank everybody who's already contributed in one way or another, either financial or through prayers and support. But, you know, our dear friend really still needs uh, our support. So if we could knock on your generosity and your kind hearts, we would really appreciate it. And I think we're going to flash some numbers on the screen. If Virginia Bautista has touched you one way or another with her posts, with her webinars, you know, she's been a, the, you know, a very big voice here on LinkedIn Philippines. In fact, uh, she's touched so many lives. Uh, if you could give back a little, that would be appreciated by the family. So thank you so much in advance for your support to our dear friend, Virginia. So I'll give a few seconds if you want to take a picture of the of the screenshot of the of the slide in front that would be great. Uh, let me go now to uh, the much awaited introduction of our guest speaker for this early evening. We call it an early evening with the dean, right? He is acclaimed as one of the most celebrated professional speakers and business consultants in the country. Uh, he specializes in strategic planning and management, local and regional business development enterprise startup and growth, financial wellness, and family business expansion. He is also the Dean of Entrepreneurship of the Platinum Circle of Bo Sanchez's Truly Rich Club and a lead advocate and Amen pioneer mentor of Go Negocio. He is also an adjunct professor of entrepreneurship at the Asian Institute of Management. At present, he is the chairman of SPAC Information Technology, Inc., a company that provides IT business solutions and systems developers augmentation in the U.S. Finally, he's also a director of the Caraga Renewable Energy Corporation, a multi-billion peso power plant venture in Mindanao. Last but not least, our dear guest tonight is a best-selling author of five books, and I'm sure you probably read one of them. First is How to Become a Happy Retiree, a Guide to Retiring Wealthy and Worthy in Your 40s. I hope I, I hope I, I did that. I'm way past my 40s, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> How to Turn Your Passion into Profit, Eight Keys to Build a, a Truly Rich Business, uh, co-authored with Bo Sanchez. Go Negocio, 21 Steps on How to Start Your Own Business with a Tagalog version. And finally, his fifth book, which became a bestseller in 2018, uh, is entitled, uh, co-authored with Bo Sanchez as well, uh, Be Happy, Healthy, and Wealthy Today, How to Be richer with life lessons from the teacher and the preacher so Bo is the teacher and our guest tonight is uh sorry Bo is the preacher and our guest tonight obviously is the teacher um ladies and gentlemen it's our honor and privilege uh to uh you know introduce my mentor he's already semi-retired but he did this specially for me and anda so i'd like everybody to give a warm welcome to the one and only dean pax lapid Hi Ian, hi Anda. Uh, great, great to be here uh, in your platform, and I I, I, I love your uh, how do you call it the platform advocacy resilience in leadership, and then I I know that uh, you're the uh, the brain uh, behind the top leader uh, thirty leaders, and I saw that uh, AIM is uh, partnered with you guys. Uh, congratulations and ANC. So I love those two. I'd like uh, just to correct. I'm a former adjunct faculty of entrepreneurship. Baka magalit yung mga faculty sa AIM. <laughs> like I said, I'm semi-retired. Uh, but every now and then, so you wake me up. So this is only my third live uh, telecast and uh, business leader session. The first one's uh, in January, right after New Year, I had it with uh, uh, Secretary Ramon Lopez, who and I, together with Joey, 
started go negotio uh, 15, 16 years ago. The second is, I guess you now know that I'm the Dean of Entrepreneurship of the Truly Rich Club of Brother Bo Sanchez. So that was my second live telecast. So, and of course, the third is with you guys, Top 30 Leaders, Resilience in Leadership. So between Ian and Anda, so so I'm back uh, semi-retired. So I am now thank, very Thank active. you, Dean. It's an honor. Uh, so at 65, it's not any more time as my element. It's already energy. So by now, you see at 65, I'm still very, very energetic to do this for you. So I'd like to say good afternoon and early good evening to everybody. And I have about 30 minutes and then we'll do a Q&A. Uh, uh, you've got maybe some Miss Universe question. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope I can answer them. <laughs> so that nothing too hard for an old dog like me. So they call me Wo Wo. So I've got three three grandchildren, Frances, Francine, and Franco. So I enjoy them now. So uh, I guess I'm ahead of my curve. I retired uh, at 42 in corporate life, went to entrepreneurship. And then people are saying, Dean, how come you're retiring at 65? You're still a lot of things. I'm like, oh, I know. But now I choose and pick who I talk to or who I am with. And I, it is my pleasure, distinct pleasure to be with you guys uh, tonight for about, we're, we're doing about 45 minutes to about an hour, right? Yep. yep. And an uh, honor, congratulations. An this is the first live podcast and the first live uh, business leader session. So to the listeners of podcasts and even to the viewers that in LinkedIn, this is a business leader session. This is very, very differentiated from any webinar that you might have. And I'm very flattered that after Josiah Go and uh, uh, Risa, which is Ralph Riches, is now Dean Paxlapid. So can I already start the deck? Uh, Ian, Please go ahead, that... Dean. Please go ahead. We're all excited. Uh, so I'll now share my screen to everybody. Uh, I might be doing it fast, but uh, the reality is... Hang on. So... Okay, so... Oops. So I'll do the window. I'll do my screen. Uh, I hope everybody now sees my uh, PowerPoint deck. Resilience yep. in Leadership, Ian Santos and Anda Goseco. So yep. good evening. To everybody, and uh, like I said, a distinct privilege and a pleasure to be the guest of Ian and Anda in this uh, podcast and uh, live uh, business uh, leader session. Uh, I have framed, uh, I'll call it a conversation. So I will tell story. It's just like conversing with you. That's how I do mentoring with two objectives. The first is survival and the other one is growth. Dean. You are out of topic. No. Survival and growth should be the outcomes of being a resilient leader. I will repeat. Survival and growth is the real outcome of a resilient leader. Why? Survival, because it's business continuity. Growth, because it is recovery to rebuild using your business advantage. I hope that's very clear. So, uh, over the two years in pandemic, I wrote two manuscripts. So, after my fifth best-selling book, <laughs> I said I'll probably just give it away after all this pandemic. So, uh, it's now in the editorial team. I have my own, uh, but uh, I'll still discuss whether I want to publish it or just maybe give it away in tri uh, trinkets of newsletter here on LinkedIn. So the first manuscript is called Growth. So G-R-O-W-T-H. It's goals. What is R? R should be results of recent years. If your results of recent years is positive, then you move to opportunity. But if your results of recent years is negative, you go back to my, my other manuscript, which is Steps. Self, time and talent, and the, uh, environment out there, product positioning, and then strategy. Of course. And then Growth. We go back to growth. Goals, results, opportunity. When you have opportunity, do you do your work plan? You test that work plan and then you harvest. Of course, that's a different session. Maybe to generate money for more for Virginia, I'm offering that business leader 
uh, session na uh, Ian and Anda, we can talk about that. And then uh, you can charge a bit and all of that can go to Virginia. Sure, that's Dean. That's, my, a great, that's a great idea, Dean. I, I hope. Uh, dito po, nakalibre na kayo ng 3.5. So yung sudod, may bayad naman kahit konti. But to the connections of Anda, to the connections of Ian, and those that will connect with me, uh, this PowerPoint deck in PDF will be available for you if you ask for it in a message in LinkedIn. So you have to connect with me in LinkedIn or even uh, Ian or the three of us. And then I will share this PowerPoint deck. So like I said, binigay mo na, di, binigay mo na lubos-lubosan. So having said that, I have a survey. I always start with this. I want an engaged uh, audience. What is your current resilient situation? So I start from the bottom. Pulled of resources, which means na saipo na, na tuyo ka na. The other one is you're trying to be resourceful with what you have or trying to find where you have. And the other one, you're very, very courageous of all in now, full of resources. I'll give you about maybe <clears throat> uh, how do they engage? They can engage through the link in Liba or uh, uh, is, Mark, is Joe Mark uh, uh, streaming in the FB account? So whatever it is, just think about it. Pulled of resources, resourceful or full of resources all in now. So while you're thinking about that, I hope you connect with me in LinkedIn. So I'm Dean Pax, Francisco Lapid. So I've got another one, which is uh, Dean Pax, but I put there the Francisco. Uh, just see that uh, thing. And then that's a chairman that serves you through advocacy and my IT company. Okay. So I hope by now you've chosen one of the answers. I will now reframe and redefine what resilience is all about. So, being in the master's degree and being in the doctoral degree, we've been trained to look at definitions of things that are very important. Resilience is a very important term. Resilience is a very important <laughs> value. So, for you to start anything on the right footing, you need to understand or know the definition of what you're getting into. So resilience is the capacity to recover. I'll repeat, to recover quickly from difficulties. So ano ibig sabihin? You're already facing difficulty or challenges. Resilience is never a poster paper name. It is reality that you're already facing difficulty. And in one term, it is toughness. Matibay, matatag. So that, that's why I put the Tagalog translation. Even when I do my prayer time, believe it or not, Anda and Ian, I wake up at 3.30, 3.30 to 5. That's my prayer time. That's when I talk to God when all of you are still sleeping. <laughs> so he listens to me. Yeah, but. That, uh, the, why did I say that? My Bible is a diglot, which means there's an English of the verse and there's also a Tagalog. And the Tagalog version is more meaningful and emotional. And that's why I put a Tagalog. It's seldom that you would see a speaker putting a total translation of the Tagalog version of the term. Resilience is your ability to become strong to become healthy, to become successful again, again, after something bad has happened. You cannot term yourself resilient if you did not face a challenge that was difficult or something challenging. So in Tagalog, katatagan ay tumutukoy sa kakayahan. Yeah? Mapanatili ang mga proseso sa harap ng mga pagsubok. Di ba mas naintindihan? In your mother tongue, you understand this very well. Ito ay nagagamit sa pamamagitan ng pagpupursige, which is your perseverance, ang iyong adaptasyon, which is adaptation sa pagbabago. So, adaptation. Who will survive the new normal? Who will survive uncertainty? Brothers and sisters, 
listening here on our Business Leaders uh, Podcast, it is not the smartest. It is not the strongest. It is the one most responsive to change. Talking about change and resilience has a lot to do with change. When you really want to improve your life, you have to make a choice to take a chance for a better change. I think we've seen that during the election campaign. You made a choice to take a chance for a better change. Diba? So, during the past two years of pandemic, I've met three kinds of persons. The constraint, yung, yung talagang sakal na sakal, hirap na hirap, said na said, that's a constraint. The cautious, yung ingat na ingat. And then the courageous. The courageous, as my mom will always say, una vida con miedo es como la vida medias. What does that mean? A life lived in fear is a life half lived. That's why I will say, life is a 3C. You make a choice to take a chance for a better change. Iyan anda, nag-uumpisa pa lang tayo. <laughs> Ang dami ng ah? learning din. Ang dami ng learning. First two slides pa lang. So first two slides pa lang. Kaya hitik na hitik po. Like I said, this is a 3,500 seminar that I do normally half a day but we'll compress it to about an hour. But I think you'll be more excited if we do the real seminar. Of course, we'll limit that and we'll do that as a fundraising for Virginia. Okay, so I will now relate resilience, business, whether you're the executive or the entrepreneur, to illness, to health. I think you will understand this better because we all came from some sort of <laughs> COVID infection or even uh, uh, some dilemmas that uh, led to that. But now you understand that the health, our body, comes from illness to wellness. And I have redefined illness to wellness with three stages. If you're in illness, you're suffering. When you're still not too well, you're now struggling because you're not yet that healthy. You're not yet back to a point. You have to go back to a neutral point or a healthy or a basic healthy stature before you become thriving, before you run a marathon. You'll never run your normal marathon if you got sick or you got 40 degree fever you probably have to rest maybe a week or two weeks and then you'll probably have to take it in stride to take back the 42k that you're running same thing brothers and sisters in business bouncing back whatever happens that's okay that is lip service the reality I'll tell you, and I'll, 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 I'll put a knife uh, in your stomach to really see it. The reality, even before bouncing back, you need to find solid and neutral ground. Just like basketball, you're running. For you to take the three-point shot na nagpanalo sa UP Maroons natin, the guy should be stable and takes the jump shot of the three-point, and he sinks, and he wins that game. So, you can never take the chances are maybe less or minimal if you're running and then you just throw the ball, bahala na si Batman. Never say bahala na si Batman. Kita nyo, ang lumabas si Robin. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just uh, being very nice uh, this evening. So, thinking will never overcome fear, but action will. A lot of people say they're resilient. Only overthinking resiliency. I believe uh, that's not the right path or method. You have to take some action. And I now, I like this is a founder poster. You you uh, go into Pinterest, you, you check founder, and you see very, very nice posters about uh, inspiration and motivation there. I believe that being resilient is being extraordinary. So, what is that? So, we'll we'll do that in the next uh, couple of slides. But before I do the definition of being extraordinary in the concept of resilience in leadership, 
I now ask you the question. What do you do as a business leader when no one really knows what to do? And this is the reality of 3R, resilience for recovery and rebuild. It's the first time that we all had this COVID pandemic. And it's taken us two years to really manage it. Now, you have all the other variables of the Russia, Ukraine war, the high inflation, the commodity, the stoppage of supply chain. So you don't really cannot figure out in real time. And then you're under stress. That's the real feeling, brothers and sisters, here on LinkedIn, of crisis leadership. You are now entering the world called VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Put it in a different term, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Then, what do we do? Oh, it's a reframe. You know, I'm an NLP practitioner. I mean, some of you have been my student. To counteract volatility, you refrain into long-term vision. Volatility to vision. From uncertainty, what do you do? You try and figure out the definition, the relevance, for you to have understanding. When something is complex, a lot of moving parts, you try and manage what you can eat for breakfast. So from complexity, you now do clarity. Understanding with clarity now leads to the counter of ambiguity, which is agility. Volatility is vision or visionary. Uncertainty is understanding. Complexity is clarity. And ambiguity needs agility. Of course, that's a different Session all throughout because I do that in strategic leadership for private companies. And I've had about one, two, about three of them. So two in Mindanao and one here in Luzon. Uh, when we came in as early as November, December, and then come into January. So uh, those are three-day strategic planning. I don't call it strategic planning. I call it strategic realignment because you need to realign. The strategy may be good. You don't have to dump it into the trash can. You just have to realign and then you have to call on your reserves as well as your resources to do that for you. The big problem of strategy is really implementation and execution. That's why I'm good on strat planning and alignment. So, early on into the pandemic, you can see the date. March 31, 2020, 7 a.m., of course, that was 7 p.m. Uh, uh, in the East Coast. I attended coping with sudden changes in cash needs and availability. Because as early when uh, President Duterte announced, I think it was March 12 or 14, 15 days or two weeks after, I wanted to find business models of continuity and growth mindset. And I found it in Harvard. Of course, a little bit expensive. But the learning that I had from the people there, including Jasa, Jaime Sobel, uh, the Ayala, said liquidity and cash reserves to do what? To preserve the employee pool as much as we can and as long as we can. Wow, that is a business leader. My comment when we were doing our CAN group, I said in severe downturn, I had several recessions. I do my work uh, in the U.S., you as the business leader, there are two kinds of business leader. The entrep leader, the entrepreneur, and the intrapreneur. What's the difference? The entrepreneur uses his resources to make the choice and take the chance to risk on the opportunities. The intrapreneur manages the resources that it does it, but it's a company, but gives him the respect and the right to use it for the benefit of professional and profitability and productivity for the organization. All I said, any business leader in a downturn must lead and must bleed. I will repeat, it is not just a question of leading, but also a question of bleeding, which means you put where your mouth is. You put a stake on the ground if you want to preserve the employee pool or you want to preserve 
the brand of the company or the legacy of what was generated by your first generation. So who do you think will succeed in post-pandemic? We're already in post-pandemic. I believe that with all the vaccines, not, not much uh, numbers in COVID. Who will succeed? Definitely the one with the growth mindset. If you're fixed with all those things there, I would just say, if you continue to do what you've always uh, done, you will continue to get what you've always gotten. As Einstein said, if you continue to do what you've always done and you think that you will grow, you're insane. Einstein said that in some ganung language. The growth mindset is the one that will really succeed. But look at that. Failure is an opportunity to grow. Just like uh, Edison, it took him what? A thousand light bulbs before it lighted. Yeah? So 99 failed, but that, that 1,000 light bulb was the one that lighted. So success really is all about fear, all about the risk that you take. Even your self-doubt, the failure. I think the most important here, when you probably recover from fear and the risk, is discipline. And I will redefine that into self-discipline. What is self-discipline? Brothers and sisters here in the podcast or even in our uh, live uh, presentation, it's doing the things that you're supposed to do even if you don't feel like doing it. I will repeat. Self-discipline is doing the things that you're supposed to do even if you don't feel like doing it. You want RTO back, you want half of your team, then you yourself and the leaders should be back in the office if that's required, especially if you're in the PESA zone. Yeah, if you want advantages of the incentives. Let me dig dive. So the first one, growth and fix with all those quotations. I think the more important thing is that to really understand growth mindset and fixed mindset, you understand and need to understand so the mindset that shapes behavior. It's about goals, it's about responses, it's about the effort, it's about strategies, and then it's already the result. So the goal is not only about the learning goal, but it has to be related to mastery and competence. I have a different take here. When I do mentor, it is not a question of mastery. It a, is it a question of mastering. Huh? There's a difference? Of course there is. Mastery takes you a period or a season. Mastery takes you for a lifetime because of a reason. I'll repeat. Mastery will take you for a period and a season while mastering will take you a lifetime because of a reason. I'm an entrepreneur. Even before my master's degree in AIM, I was already an entrepreneur, our family business. But I said, <laughs> after taking all the lessons from my mom, I said, something is lacking in framework. I took my master's degree in AIM. A million pesos for a year and a half. And then you're with other entrepreneurs that you network. And you learn from them. Actually, you learn from more your classmates than the one that's the lecturer in the case study. So, and that was 2001 right after I, got, I retired from Shell. Ten years later, 2011, I took my doctorate in organization development. Why? Because I was already mentoring first-generation entrepreneurs to growth to next level potential. So what am I supposed to do? I already know the discipline, of course, engineering, while, while my bachelor's degree, in it gave me the discipline of uh, the process mindset uh, and the systems thinking. The masters gave me the framework of the entrepreneurship journey. But the OD gave me more the framework that each client is different. So you design, you develop, you deliver, and then you depart. That's the OD framework. So, hindi di kahon. And I, I, I squirm, I scringe when some would ask, Dean, 
Do you do family constitution? Sabi ko, yes or no, it depends on what the objective is. Remember, a paper, a family constitution paper document, or even a marriage license is nothing without the real relationship. And that, was, that is what matters in family business. One is family, one is business. Family would lead to harmony, business would lead to profitability. Those could clash. Again, that's a different workshop that we do, and I do that with Prof. Eric Soriano of Wong Bernstein. He does governance, I do the strategy. And our objective for you to outgrow the company to more than 50 years. Who doesn't want a company more than 50 years? I can count with my 10 fingers the Ayala, uh, some Chinese company that are uh, just uh, simply lang, but they've gone beyond three generations already. So again, the growth should be redefined how deep it is between goals, responses, effort, strategy, and results. So, so I'm just giving you the framework here because if you're my first connection together with Ian and Anda, you'll get a copy of the full deck. So better connect already. Bahala kayo. So let's still talk about growth because we're now into recovery and to rebuild. Recovery maybe is still a little bit growth or back to normal, but it's really the trajectory of growth that you need to know, not the figure of your pre-pandemic 2019. Growth will always start with you, and growth is up to you. I will repeat what I said early on, that growth, my acronym is G-R-O-W-T-H, the goals, the results of recent years, the opportunity, the work plan, the testing of that work plan, and then the harvest. It is your ability to carry out a plan that will encourage you to follow the plan through with persistence. Resilience in leadership. You want the goals. Fine. You are there at the tail end of the road. Resilience in leadership is like a road that's got a lot of pessimism, rejection, even your close friends, your own ego, your haters your relatives, and then even society of like, oh, mahirap ngayon, different administration. But when you start acting and you fail, this is now where fear, guilt, and even doubt to yourself appears. You have to all hurdle that before you really get into the goals that you really want and that bad. We're now into recovery. You have to change now from a shift from survival, which is business continuity, to thriving, which is your business advantage for growth. You must follow a process. There is such a process called moving from the comfort zone into the current zone. And what are those zones? And let me help you craft that. Two years of pandemic, you feel safe. You feel in control. You're vaccinated. Fine. Business is okay. But okay is not growing. Because there is fear. Why? That's the first hell there. You're now lacking the confidence of how to navigate the new normal. Do you know that we've got three crises right now? The health crisis, COVID, of course, that's already almost settled. The financial crisis, which is the economic Still coming in, maybe a recession, I don't know. And what's the other one? A social crisis. What's a social crisis did? A change of behavior of your customer. There will now be a new consumer or customer behavior. And that is the social crisis. Maybe the customer is gone because he has changed an attitude to your product or service. I hope you understand that. Only people say it's a health and an economic crisis. What you're not realizing, there is a social crisis, a change of behavior. Like I said, there are still people who will be constrained. There will still be people who will be cautious. And of course, 
the people like me and Ian and the, are the courageous. And I guess half of the people here, that's why you're called business leaders. Yeah. So you took the time out. Sabi nga lang, link in lang eh, pang matalino. So, the fact that the 300 were able to come in, congratulations! You're the smart guys that came in to this LinkedIn event. Yung iba na, from my Facebook friends, hindi daw nila makita. Well, sabi ko, the first step you have to be a member of LinkedIn. I mean, you cannot go into a room if you're not a member, you don't have the key. Sabi ko, so, after the fear zone, this is where everybody takes the shortcut. The learning zone. If you're now dealing <laughs> with challenges and problems, you need to ask help. You need to ask probably somebody who knows better. You need to acquire new skills. Especially now. Many, I, I have uh, a note from a friend, many have resigned because they said they wanted to work from home. Well, I can share maybe in the next few days. I just got another uh, uh, data and visuals from Harvard Business Review. The grid that says, when do you do hybrid? When do you do uh, all in the office or all remote or uh, a, a combination of the two? I will share that uh, in the next few days, maybe uh, towards the, maybe next Monday. Probably next Monday. So Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, there are not much people looking at uh, all the social media platforms. So we'll do it on Monday or Tuesday. So the learning zone. You have to be, if you are an entrepreneur, you are an executive, you have to probably read the Wall Street Journal, The Economist, uh, you want to do maybe some Harvard, you can see that uh, being streamed or shown in LinkedIn every now and then. You have to learn. You have to adapt and you have to get more information. When you now have information, you process that and that now becomes knowledge. And uh, once you got knowledge and you apply, then it now becomes applied learning and that now becomes your own. From a learning zone, that's the only time that you now get into the growth zone where you find, you set new goals. Maybe you find your purpose. Maybe now you build your dream. Purpose, passion, and profession in my book are three different things. Profession may not be the purpose. Your purpose may be somebody, you care for the community. But at the same time, in profession, you're doing very, very competent work. I always believe passion is my definition of love to do that you're good at. If you're not good at something, that's you're not being passionate. You're just loving and liking it. So, I now move that the journey of change is from the ordinary to the extraordinary. So I've got uh, my last five minutes here and yeah, I Dean, should be ending this. Dean, if so, I may ask lang, Dean? Yeah, shoot. Sure. Yeah, if you can go back to your previous slide, this is one of the my most favorite slides of your presentation. This one? Yep, yep. Uh, yep. If I may ask lang from your perspective, Dina, no, what, what tip can you give to uh, you know business corporate leaders who are finding a difficult time right now, moving from the comfort zone, going into the fear zone, and you know surpassing the fear zone? Any particular tips? I know you mentioned kanina. Maybe try to get a mentor, read read a, yep, yep. a book. So the, but in the Philippine yeah. setting, what can you suggest pa kaya din? Uh, the, the, to me, the, the most accessible, especially here on LinkedIn, you, you, you see posts from Harvard, you see, so depends on what discipline you are. So if you see like a three or a five minute read, better read it, di ba? And then, once you've read the article, ask maybe someone, maybe the one who posted it, or maybe a mentor, or even your own, have a discussion. Anong tingin mo doon sa sinabi ni Harvard na pag-creative, pwede palang full, fully remote tayo? Eh, paano naman? If we're just a small company, ganyan. So, where is the camaraderie? So, so, you know, so you have to get, you have to get feedback on a discussion. And that's already learning. Okay? Second is with online, 
with online. There are a lot of, how do you call that? On your time learning. Hindi ka mamadaliin. You have to cut the learning. Like Harvard. Harvard, let's say on marketing or maybe on entrepreneurship or strategy is a little bit more difficult. The strategy, uh, I can say this to anybody, <laughs> Harvard managed mentor uh, already concocts or uh, packages uh, a learning module for strategy or marketing. For how much? Only for, I guess, uh, $19 or $20. So 1,000 pesos you're getting from Harvard. Wow. So you have to budget. You have to put your time, talent, and treasure to more learning. You're a leader. Remember, you are a leader. Later on, I will ask the question, will you be able to grow a great company? And I will give you the answer. So I hope uh, it's easy. Uh, uh, Ian, you know how many books I read every every year? No, no, every week na lang. I, I would take a guess maybe one to two books. Uh, three books every week. Wow. Three, three heavy books. Every, so uh, I read one on inspiration. I read one on initiation and I read one on integration. That's how I classify my books. I have a question also. Like, um, yeah, Anda, go ahead. Yeah, so I have also have like all these books, but I don't get to read all of them. And so I'm wondering because, you know, also other people read books or listen to people speak and all that. But how do you retain the important information? Because like sometimes when you read a book or you yeah, listen to something or watch something, you forget it easily. So how, ah. do you, how do you know? How do you retain all this? Uh, well, what I teach in NLP and to my mentees, once you read, you pick up only the terms that you picked up, okay? Then you read again. When you read again, you now will pick up the concept. What was it telling all about? Okay? Before, even in case studies, you read the facts. Then you need the situation. And then you go to the consequences. So, so, when you read, maybe you read twice or you read thrice. And then you have to scribble. You write and you note and then you draw. When you now do, you look at my, you look at the way I produce the deck. These are all principles that I integrate and put visually. 70 to 80% of business leaders are visual. And that's how you retain. Believe it or not, I read in pictures. I don't read in words. I read in pages. I read it. That's why I'm a fast reader. And then, and then immediately in a snapshot, I'll be able to get the whole concept of the theme of the page or what's it's telling. Hmm. So I, I'm giving you the technique on how fast readers do it. So you hmm. read in a page or what would attack your son may be boring. So you flip it. Doesn't matter. You want to read a book that's maybe about 150, 170 pages. Flip the book or first look at the table of contents. Look at the introduction. Look at the epilogue. Paminsan, the whole summary is in the epilogue. Mm -hmm. Then you already get the, the other bits. You do the summary books. Yeah. Again, that's think, easy. Yeah, I think that's important in learning because, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, well, every day we learn something. So I'm just trying to find a way to pick up, pick those golden nuggets. So yeah. I know, you, 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 know, you know how I answer exams before in UP? I, 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 read, I, read, first the, 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 I read first the question before I read the whole, the whole thing. Hmm. I read first the question. So end in mind. Always, guys, end in mind. Because you're learning. You want to acquire new skills or new knowledge that will turn into application. So can I continue? By the way, uh, hope it's okay for everyone that we might extend a bit, but uh, feel free uh, yep. if you need to go. But we will continue with the podcast because this is such a rich learning that we're getting from Dean Pax, no? Thank you. Thank you. And and no, no, in excite to the sila if they want to join the seminar for Virg Virginia Bautista. Diba? All right. So I just tell you the story of my mom. Uh, during the pandemic, so... 
I call her the extraordinary entrepreneur in Panay. At 88, she revived all the Quinta Market, uh, sirloin tapa, chorizo, hamunado, embutido chaurico, and even a Spanish morton. And she wanted it online. Luckily, uh, the smart son, the second son, is into IT. So I made her a Lola Move. So mm-hmm. even the name, Lola Move. So Lala Move, diba? Rhymes, diba? So, napakagaling ko, Ian Anda, never ako na front page ng Jario. <laughs> Nanay ko na front page ng Jario. From crisis to opportunity. Wow! That is a resilient entrepreneur. Very, very At 88. Creative. Very creative uh, title, Dean. <laughs> yeah, and and she has inspired a lot of the nanay because I use the story as my business model when we run the USA, the Women Global Development Program. For 800 nanays, we were able to put up 350 storefronts that generated 36 million all at the height of the pandemic. So mommy became the model. Sabi ko, kayo, Kundi pa kayo 88, abay, tatalunin kayo itong 88, nanay ko. Abay, gising-gising kayo. So again, tatamad-tamad because it's pandemic, tatakot-takot because pandemic. But this, this continues, brothers and sisters. So that's my mom. So I'm always in the end. It's not a question of working hard because working hard for something that you don't care about is stress. So brothers and sisters, Half of your lifetime is work. So better make sure you care about the work. When you're working hard for something that you love and care for, that is passion. The struggle that you're in today in uncertain times, high inflation, we don't know what's happening in the supply chain, is really, really developing the strength for the need tomorrow. A lot of mentors in my circle, pipilitin the weakness. Wow, like me. I want to sing and dance. But my song and dance doesn't like me. Maybe my grader is one or two. Even if I've got my musical coach, I'll probably end five or six. But my strength is in mentoring. My strength is in lecturing. My strength is in business. And if I craft that and hone that more with Harvard, uh, with McKinsey, with all other things in AIN, I could be a nine. That's why I guess I'm a five-time best-selling author. I'm one of the sought-after speaker or even strategic consultant because I try to sharpen the knife on my strength, not on the weakness. So brothers and sisters, the struggle that you're in today is really developing the strength that you will need for tomorrow. <laughs> the survey, so of course, I'd skip this, but always in the zone, opening to possibility, creating new opportunity, and building capacity. So this is a trick question of the DNA of the extraordinary. The answer there is everything. A business leader mindset is the behaviors of someone who is extraordinary. The story, the backstory there, I was still doing my PhD. I connected the advantage of a PhD candidate you will be able to get the abstract of the publications of doctors like you. I was able to catch David Hall. He's British. And he did a research on how to start, how to grow, and how to revitalize the business. Very, very timely now in times of uncertainty. By golly, because I was already a PhD candidate and he saw me AIM at that time. So I am in the website of AIM. He gave me the research findings. And what I can now share for everybody here is I crafted the six into detail. Getting into the zone. Once you get into the zone, you open up to the new world. When Once you're in the new world, you see possibility and then you create the superior opportunity. I call that whatever you seek, you have to size. And whatever you size, you have to cease. Seek, size, and then cease. Hanapin, timbangin, tapos gawin. Hanapin, timbangin, at gawin depending on your capability. And once you have that, you have to stay in the zone. And when you're now staying in the zone, you have to build capacity. So, 
I'll give this deck anyway to our first connections. Getting into the zone is really the, the mindset that will create success. <laughs> End in mind, success. But the factors there are four. Achievement drive, compelling vision, goal or uh, directed energy. You have to direct goal, directed energy. So you have to make things happen. And then action oriented. You have to take the initiative. The second element is really opening up to the world, which is connecting to the world, expressing the passion, purposeful networking, and creates partnership. Para link in tayo dito, Ian and Anda, di ba? Opening up to the world. So guys, so okay lang ang social natin in FB. I love FB. I put all my apo there that will link in. But when it comes down to business, professional, educational, instructional, put it on LinkedIn and that's where it matters because you create a passion. You have a purpose for networking and you create partnership. Joining the dots is all about seeing the possibility, the wholeness, the options thinking, and the savviness. The superior opportunity is really high profitable with sustainable competitive advantage. I will repeat. In the pitchy pitchy opportunity, you have to find high growth that is profitable and then that you can be sustainable. I always say, when you do a business, is it feasible? Uh, after it's feasible, is it viable? And after it's viable, is it sustainable? What is feasible? Able to do. What is viable? Able to do profitably. What is sustainable? Able to do profitably continuously. Able to do able to do profitably, able to do profitably continuously. And that is the secret of creating superior opportunity. And that involves the seeking, the synthesis, the solving, and of course, the delighting of the customer. The last two, if you don't use it, you lose it. You need focus. Always the positive mindset. Always the self-determining. And what's self-determining? You are comfortable with making your own decisions that will shape the destiny of yourself, your career, or even your company. And of course, the persistence of seeing through the things and recovering well from the setback, which in my view is resilient. And the building capacity, capability. Building the business capacity to grow. And where do you get that? From systems innovation, from the team, and then experiential learning. I will end with a homework for all of you. I will challenge all the people here on LinkedIn listening, all my connections, even if it's a career, an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, an executive, that you have to have an extraordinary commitment highlighting extraordinary goals for this year and for next year. And I have done that for my own. I would like to bring IT SPAC to our corporate innovation, managed service agreement, pivots yon for more, being more productive, corporate governance to being more professional, financial management towards being more profitable. Without this major innovation in the IT SPAC's recovery objective, the company may falter or fail, which I will never allow. And the management team will exhaust all means to sustain the employee bull or even seeking help from banking institutions or DTI and SB Corp. We got a loan from SB Corp and we paid it already a loan and there was a moratorium. So the government is helping entrepreneurs in this case. The business would be uncertain, the US clients still volatile. <clears throat> we don't know what happens. But the silver lining is that the IT cost in onshore is still expensive. So we are a better cost value provider. So down the line, <laughs> all I said here, I care passionately where IT SPAC stands today. We've been both lucky and agile to survive 2020. In fact, I even had maybe about uh, four or five employees new. In 2022, from the 2020 figures, we are now triple. We are now triple. From something 
Uh, that is a small company. We've gone, grown to a medium-sized company with about 70 consultants all deployed and maybe about 10 or 12 people in head office. That's not uh, an easy task. But after all, we're 18 years and I would see it grow further with my next generation when we celebrate our 2024 anniversary, which is my 20th. And by that time, I could step down even as chairman of ITSPA. So I'll have more time in LinkedIn, Ian. <laughs> so we will Great. always be safe. Uh -uh. We will always keep the faith. So in ending, being extraordinary is seeing the extra in the ordinary. As a business leader and a mandate, being extraordinary must be doing business extraordinarily. <clears throat> my ending, again, okay, catch me on LinkedIn so my first connections can request privately. So you have to message me. Will you build a great company? So this is a trick question. The answer is no. You cannot do it alone. So will you? Of course, a company is not you. An administration is not you. It needs a team. What is a team? T-E-A-M. The technical, the entrepreneurial, the admin, and the marketing. The team. When you run alone, you can run fast and eventually fail. Madadapake. When you run with others, you can run far and eventually succeed for the long term. Your career, your business is a marathon. It's not a 100-meter dash. None of us, whether it's Ian, Anda, me, anybody else, is going to build a great company. But we will lead incredible and great people, in my case, my next generation, who will build the great company in their lifetime. Are we growing despite crisis and uncertainty? Yes, we are. The operations team and my IT consultants, thanks to the new breed of agile directors and heads, more importantly, thank you to God. If you are thinking fast, you're wanting to raise. But if you're thinking God first, you're wanting grace. Maraming maraming salamat, Ian, Anda, for this privilege to be with you uh, this evening. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for listening. listening. If you enjoy and find value in this episode, share this with a friend, leave us a rate or review on Apple Podcasts. And make sure to subscribe to get notified of our next episode. Talk to you next time. Remember to always stay resilient.